Hello everyone. Let's give you a walkthrough of Zoho's guided conversations in this video. We'll look at all the components that are used in guided conversations, also known as GC, and find out how easy it is to build. GC is a low code builder with a predefined set of blocks. Each block serves a unique purpose, and by using them, you can easily build your conversation flow. The three main components of GC are blocks, paths, and variables. Blocks are individual units that perform functions in GC. When blocks are added to the flow, they create a path. Paths are executed from top to bottom. This makes it easier for us to follow the flow pattern. And finally, variables are nothing but placeholders for values. There are four kinds of variables, block variable, global variable, local variable, and session variables. Let's look at blocks in detail. As you can see here, there are two major types of blocks, response blocks and action blocks. Response blocks are used to interact with users on the front end. Using them, you can convey messages, ask questions, or provide choices to your users. Response blocks are further categorized into message, question, and choice blocks. Message blocks are used to simply display information to the users. Text and info card are parts of the message blocks. Using them, you can greet the users or show your product details as cards. To create a text block, you're simply required to provide a block name and the message you want to convey to your end users. That's it. The preview option here is pretty useful to check the block before saving. You can also see how this block will appear on iOS and Android devices. Next is the info cards, which can be used to display information in the form of cards. Here you have static and dynamic cards. Static cards are used to display fixed information. They do not change during runtime. For example, fixed data like your menu card, your services, or your product details can be displayed using a static card. Dynamic cards are used to display information that changes during runtime. The order summary will change from customer to customer. Similarly, the availability of an offer or recent tickets of a customer are all dynamic data which change constantly. These details can be displayed easily through dynamic cards. To create an info card, specify the card type and similar to a message block, provide a name and a pretext if required. Under the card info list, all we need to do is add the details of the card, such as an image, title, subtitle, and description. There's also an option to add more details. After entering the necessary details, your card would look like this, and this add card option helps you to add more such cards. Next, let's move on to question blocks. Question blocks are used to collect inputs from users. We can collect email address, files, images, videos, audio files, and more using question blocks. Let's say you want to collect your customer's email. You can add the question that you want to ask. Notice this input variable here. This is where the customer's email will be stored. Since it's created in a block, it's called a block variable. We'll get to variables later in this video. Moving on to advanced settings, the option called skip block lets your users skip the block without answering your question and the end block, when enabled, sends the GC flow after this specific block. Whenever you use the email block, Rest assured that it will automatically validate the value and check for standard email address formats. Similarly, number, image, video, audio, and file blocks also check for specified input formats. Moving on to choice blocks. This provides users with options as buttons, dynamic buttons, or as choice cards. Creating a button is super easy. Text, image, video, audio, and even smileys can be presented in the form of buttons. After entering block name and question, list out the buttons you want to create. This toggle helps you create a separate path for each button. If this is switched on, 
the user will be directed to different paths based on the button they choose. Choice cards are similar in creation to info cards. Here, cards are presented in the form of options. For example, a choice card would look like this. The user can scroll through the carousel and select their desired option. There are single and multi-choice cards available. If multi-type is selected, it's possible for users to select more than one card. Those were all the message blocks. Now, let's see the action blocks in detail. These blocks are used to perform back-end processes. They help to convert a simple Q&A flow into a more powerful one. They can change the course of the flow, divide paths, perform operations, and even connect with third-party applications. There are four types of action blocks, jump, fork, operation, and webhook. Using jump block, you can move forward or backward within the same flow or switch between different flows. For example, while placing an order, the user might like to change their delivery address or edit their order. With the jump block, that's possible. You can lead the user back to a place in the GC where they can add the correct address again. Similarly, if you're dealing with cancellations and refunds in a separate flow, and your user wants to cancel their order, you can add a jump and direct them to that specific flow. After finishing cancel and order flow, GC will come back to the primary flow and go through the rest of it. To add a jump block, after entering the name, specify the flow to which you want to jump. Select the current flow if you're jumping in between blocks. Otherwise, select the particular flow to which you want to jump. After this, mention a block in that flow to which you will jump. Now, if you see here, after the edit button, a jump block has been created that redirects the flow to menu card. It's notified here as well as here. Fork block separates a GC path into two or more individual paths. For example, based on the age entered by the user, you may have to ask them a different set of questions, or based on the complaint they have registered, you can have different sets of questions. Here, Fork block can help you separate the path and direct your users accordingly. To do that, in a fork block, mention the list of paths you need to fork and select the variable based on which you would like to separate the path. Say, for example, the user's age. Next, the operation field lists the conditions that can be applied on the variable. Choose the suitable one and mention the value under comparison. The else path captures all the cases that did not fall under the previous condition. Rename it as you wish. If more paths are needed, you can quickly create one from right here. After saving, if you see here based on the age entered by the user, the flow is now separated into two paths. Moving on, the operation block helps to perform arithmetic operations on data collected. For example, using this, you can calculate the bill amount for an order. What's different here when you add this block is when you enter the arithmetic calculation in the expression field. From here, you can select and use any of the variables already created. The calculated value will be stored inside the input variable, which can be used later. Let's see one working. Enter the order quantity. Now you can see after calculation, the correct bill amount is shown right here. Webhook block helps to provide integration between GC and other applications using API. The connection can be established between GC and Zoho applications or any third-party applications like WordPress, HubSpot, Zomato, Google, and much more. Custom service connections can also be established if needed. To create a webhook block, select the API method from get, patch, post, put, and delete. Specify the application's API URL, query parameters, and headers. They can be gathered from the application's API documentation. Add the connection here and pick the service. Under Formatter, you can format the response received from API, and here, you can store the response in variables which can be used later. 
Now, let's see a small example of how to create a ticket in your desk account from your GC using Webhook. Let's name it and specify the method as post. This is the desk API URL to create ticket, and it's available in the desk API documentation. Next, we add the JSON required to create the ticket details. Next, we select the connection made with the desk account and provide the success status code and the ticket number, which will be received from the API as response. Now, let's preview this. We enter a sample email and complaint, and there you go. It's created as a ticket with the same ticket number and complaint as the ticket's subject. That's all about blocks, and as we said earlier, when the blocks are added to the flow, paths are created. These separate branches are also individually called paths, and paths decide the execution of GC flow. Coming to variables, as we already saw, they're classified into block, local, global, and session variables in GC. A block variable gets created while adding a question or choice block. For instance, by using the text-based question, we can ask the user's name, and this input variable is the block variable that gets created. This block variable can later be appended in a message block to personalize the message. A local variable that is created is accessible only in the current GC flow. They can't be used across the organization or in multiple conversation flows. A global variable, on the other hand, does not belong to any particular flow and is static. For example, your company name, product names, or office phone number. These variables are not confined to a department and can be used across the organization in multiple conversation flows. Inside a block, these variables can be accessed using this at dropdown. Lastly, a session variable is a dynamic one used to get values when a GC session is going on. For instance, this can be used to collect details on the region, time zone, or the specific web page from where the user is accessing the guided conversation. This information can further help to steer the conversation with the visitor on GC. Moving on, the next important element is GC widget. This is the face of GC. In order to publish the guided conversation on your website, you need the code that can be generated by creating a GC widget. You'll find it in the menu under Guided Conversations. Let's create one. Apart from the basic details, what is important to note here is that you can add multiple flows that will be displayed as buttons to begin with. For example, if you have two flows, one for the product-related queries and one for the service-related queries, you can add them both here. The preview will give you a glimpse of how it will be displayed. Furthermore, you can set the permissions and customize the automated messages. Once saved, the code snippet will be generated, which can then be embedded in the website. And this is all you need to know to get started and build guided conversations for your organization. We hope this video gave you a clear overview on all the elements. Thanks for watching.